description. All right, so here I am with Entertain House. Thanks for coming on the channel again, mate. We're going to go through the finals predictions. Now, the top eight is um, set as time of recording. So Panthers, Storm, Eels, Roosters, Raiders, Rabbits, Knights, Sharks, the top eight. So the first week of the finals, we have predicted the Penrith Panthers to versus the Roosters in the first round. Who do you got? I've got the Roosters. I think that Penrith can definitely play a fast-paced game of football. We've seen them pretty much now wrap up the minor premiership and win these big tests. But I think the Roosters have been without their key stars all season. We're starting to find them get their groove back. I think they'll be a very dangerous team. I still don't. I don't believe that the Roosters will make the grand final. It's a massive call. I think they get knocked out in a prelim. Um, but I think that Roosters can beat Penrith in the first week. But whether they're knocked out there, that's a different story. Whether they go out in straight sets or win week two for Penrith will be another big test for them. Yeah, because I, I have a strong believer you can't only lose one game all year. So unless they lose the next two weeks, which I don't think they will, then that would be the one you'd lose because you at least have a second chance. Whereas if you lose weeks three or four, you're out. So um, the next one, Raiders Sharks. Who you got for that one? Yeah, tough game here. Um, I would go Canberra. I think Canberra have been a little bit more consistent than Cronulla have. Um, we've got Cronulla pretty much set in eighth position now, but at the same time, you've still got uh, Tigers, Eagles, Warriors under them. And that's only because that the Sharks have had some struggling matches. They got beaten by Penrith by 30 points. Um, they've had some tough games this year, and they've had some good wins. They've beaten their bogey side manly, but I'd say that they uh, they get to the first week of finals and they're, they're Gornski. Yeah, they, they do put up good fights against the Raiders, the Sharks, but I just feel like the Raiders this year are just too good. Uh, Rabbits versus the Knights would be the next game. Incredibly hard game to pick. And the more I think about this game, because I really do think this is a game that we're actually going to see in finals, and I'm looking forward to it because um, the Knights obviously beat the Rabbitohs. I believe it was 20 points to 18, and I was at that game at Bankwest. But the Rabbitohs absolutely came firing home. They've got a bolster squad that can play finals footy. The Knights have got your Kalen Ponga, um, your experience of David Klemmer. I would edge towards the Rabbitohs. If the Rabbitohs can play the way they have the last couple of weeks, and I was all over the Knights this year, but good on the Knights for making finals footy, I think that South Sydney might beat them. Yeah, I feel like just the um, Rabbitohs halves at the moment definitely clicking a lot more than the Knights. Obviously, with a couple of injuries to key positions in your hooker position, um, hard to keep a good season rolling. But yeah, I think Rabbitohs will probably edge that one as well. And the last game would be the Storm versus the Eels. Yeah, well, if it Storm versus Eels and it's it's at a Storm home game, I'm taking Storm straight away. Uh, you'd probably even argue that Storm should win if it is at Bankwest, but we gave, I know Cameron Smith and, and Cameron Munster are out, but we gave the Storm a run for their money, 14-0. Finals is a completely different game. We've been a little bit flat on attack lately. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but after the game, the boys basically got together and said, we need to win games. We need to be better having a conversation. It was really good to see that. I think it's going to be a momentum changer for us. I'd take the storm, but I don't think we'd lose by 30. I just don't. I just think that this side that I'm seeing this year that is inconsistent can turn up against these big sides. Obviously, we didn't. We did last night in the first half, but not in the second half, but I'll take Melbourne. It would definitely be a very interesting um, last two matches there for the first week of the finals. As we move on then, it will be the Penrith Panthers versus the Raiders as the first game. I'll take, I'll take Penrith. I think a loss to the Roosters might be what they need. Yeah. And the Raiders have had a good year. Well, that, that, will, that will end the Raiders' season, won't it? That Here will. There. If they lose that, yeah, okay. So good season for the Raiders. You've lost Hodson, you've lost Simonson, and that's why week two of the finals at, at this stage, if that's it, is uh, my prediction. Yeah, it'd definitely be a very big matchup. I, I predicted this at, towards the start of the year as my grand final match, but the way things are playing out, it looks like one of them will be out in the week two finals. And then the Eels versus Rabbitohs would be your next game. This would be at Bankwest. Yeah, I'd take Parramatta here. I know that um, Rabbitohs won 38-0, um, but I 
I think we can beat them. I, th- I really do. I think that, especially if you get Reed Marnie, Murata Miyakore back in the side, come out of full strength at home, week two of the final, um, it's your last chance, you do or die. I really do confidently think the Parramatta could win a game like that. Yeah, definitely. With I think Gutho would definitely stand up in a time of need and um, would be a very good match there. Then you've got your Roosters well, versus got, the you've, Eels. Sorry, you go. You've, you've, got Latre- you've got Latrell out for the season as well. So that's that's a big thing that Latrell wouldn't be there, that experience of finals footy compared to someone like, I mean, Adam Reynolds, you can argue, and Cody Walker, but you're right about uh, Gutho against a, a fullback like... Uh, Corey Allen. Yeah, for sure. That would be definitely a big um big ask for a um I'd say unexperienced fullback in those situations. Um uh, so yeah, you got your Roosters versus the Eels as the first game of week three. Big match up here. Um well I said I'll take Roosters to miss the grand final and make the, the prelim. So I'll, I'll again take Parramatta there. Um, whose home game would that be? That would be a Roosters home game. So that would be the SCG. Yes, that very will be. tough game to call. I know that you're going to take the Roosters. I'm going to take. I'm going to take Parra there. I'm going to take them. I'm not too sure on that game. Hey, it'll all depend on the week before how convincing Eels are to beat the Rabbitohs. Um, obviously, bouncing back from the first week loss to the Storm, um, it'd be very interesting that match there. Uh, Storm versus Panthers would be your next game for week three to go into the grand final. Who you got? I've got the Melbourne Storm. I uh, yeah, I think I think we're heading towards an Eels and Storm grand final. A lot of people are riding Parramatta off, and I'm close to doing it myself, but I'm not there yet. The thing for the proof last night is that defence wins comps. Yeah, our attack hasn't been the best, but it's a completely different game. And, yeah, you can argue, and I know that 42 missed tackles compared to, I think, nine for Penrith, but our defence in that first half, if we can turn that 60-minute performance into an 80-minute, then we can definitely match up against these top sides. So I'm taking a Storm Eels grand final, but I'm taking the Eels drought to continue, and I'm taking the Melbourne Storm to win the grand final. There we have it. Entertains unbiased uh, predictions there. Um Obviously, could be biased and just pick the Eels the whole way through, but he is a very fair picker, and um, that is his grand final winner for the 2020 season. And now we move on to the very next thing that will be in the NRL season, which is the state of origin selection. So if you were the coach of both sides, I'd like to hear who you would pick, and you are a Queensland supporter, am I correct? Correct. So let's start with the Queensland side then. Who do you have as your fullback for the 2020 origin? I've got Caelan Ponga. I think he reserves that spot. I think you could kind of argue that Valentine Holmes deserves a spot in the Queensland side and you'd probably put him at fullback if you did, but I would put Caelan Ponga straight in that fullback role. Yeah, I feel like he hasn't done anything to kick him out of that fullback spot. So I think he definitely stays in that fullback spot. So who would you have on the wings? He's really starting to hit, he's really starting to hit the form now as well, which is the, the time to have it. Yeah. Um, well, we've always had Gagai, so I think we've got to stick by him. I think that Gagai has been real good on that, that right-hand side. In regards to left wing, it's tough because uh, Corey Oates hasn't had enough game time, but you can't just drop him. Um, I'm not too sure on that left wing. There's a battle between a few players that you could argue between, but I just, I guess Corey Oates, I don't know. See, for my mind... Or would you have Holmes? I would not drop Gagai, but I would put Holmes and possibly Felt on the wings and put Gagai as the centre, just because he is playing centre for the Rabbits and doing quite well. And I think you do mm-hmm. need to keep Gagai in your side. Um, and I feel like Holmes just has that dimension about him and felt has been playing well for so long and hasn't had a chance. I think this would be a perfect time for him to um, be blooded into origin. Um, so who would your centres be then? I actually full haven't thought about this too much. So I'm, I'm struggling to think about it. 
I've got some I want names to... up on screen here if you need me to rattle some off. Yeah, r- rattle some names at me. So you got um, Morgan, Brimson, Mbai, uh, Oates, Gagai. You've got a utility back in Kirk Capewell if you wanted to go that mm-hmm. route. Um, you got a few players there. I'll go, I'll go Brimson for sure. I think Brimson definitely, if not in the centres, definitely deserves a spot off the bench. Yep. I think he deserves a spot on our side. He's looking very healthy, very fit and form, doing a lot for Gold Coast. And who did you say before Embai? Uh, before Embai, was it Morgan? No, it wasn't Morgan. Uh, Oates, Gagai. Oh, I didn't say Kate, Kate Kirkwell. No, not Kirk Kate. Well, there was a name that I thought. Um, Ponga Holmes, Gago, Mbai, Oates, Felt, Brimson, Morgan are the ones on in front of me here. Must be. Um, Again, not sure. That's all right. It is You could also th- possibly throw Dustin O'Neill back in the side because he has played there before. He hasn't uh, played too bad this year. In an underperforming Cowboys. It's a shame there's very limited, limited. It's a shame there's very limited to choose for for us. There is. Um, for your halves, I'm assuming you would probably keep the same from last year. Yeah, uh, Cameron Munster's been real good this year, so I'd stick by it. Who was our Cherry Evans? Oh, Cherry Evans. Yeah, the leadership. Yep. Um, let's go into your front rows. So I'm assuming Parley up there. Love the Parley. Stick by him. The nine is a big battle. The nine is a hard position. I am going to say, I think that Reed and Harry aren't just ready yet. You could argue Jake Friend. I'm going to say Ben Hunt. I would also say Ben Hunt for your hooker. Um, He's been playing well for Dragons and he's one of those players that... um, if you weren't to play Hunt, I think you'd have to play Friend. Um, like you said, I think that Harry Grant and Reed Marnie are just too young um, and inexperienced for the big stage. I mean, we did it with Haas last year and he gave away a penalty in the first game at the wrong time and potentially lost us the game. So um, I, I wouldn't see, especially not starting hooker, maybe off the bench, but not as a starting hooker. Um, and then I'm assuming probably your your second rows and locks stay the same as of the last few years, or would you throw some new names in there? Um, well, you keep Kafusi for sure, but you could also put in the mix in contention could be uh, uh, Tino, Tino Fasu Muali. Yeah. Even though he's young, not, maybe not ready for the big stage, is a huge chance, I reckon, real big chance in selection. Well, I wouldn't... If I was a Queensland supporter i would be calling for him maybe off the bench um i said not as a starting player um but he has played well another player this year that i think's done well that might deserve a spot in a failing side is uh patrick carrigan yeah carrigan's been really good he's been really impressive young carrigan i think i've got a i have got carrigan here he is as described by elite he's a young gun he sure patrick is. carrigan um, yeah, no, he's he's been in some good form in a in a Broncos slump of the year, so you could argue that. But and then we'll the wait other, and see if he gets he gets that jersey. The other player who, in my mind, is currently the interchange player of the year would be Lindsay Collins. Yeah, Lindsay Collins has been good. I think interchange player of the year is a big call. That's a big call, man. He's been the best consistent in my mind. He's best consistent uh, interchange player for any team. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's been in some damn good form off the bench. So, look, I can't argue there. Now, oh, I don't know. There's some tough, big, tough players playing off the bench this year, but Lindsay Collins has proved something else for the Roosters. Yeah, a, a, a pretty, well, I would think a pretty somewhat standard team. Definitely a team that um, would put up a good fight against the New South Wales side. Um, let's Let's switch over now to... Obviously not your preferred team, but I would like to hear what you would pick for the Blues side. Um, obviously, probably Teddy at fullback. 
Correct. And I would li like to hear your wings and center positions because I think these are interesting. I think we might need to do a slight change this year. So who would you, I guess, be afraid to see on the Blues wings and centers? So on the right-hand side for the wing, I'm going to actually put the winger of the year, in my opinion. I think he may get up the Dally M, and that is David Nokaluma. His tackle breaks, tackle bust, ability to score 17 tries in the season. Sorry, Blakey. I think Blake Ferguson out, and that right edge includes David Nokaluma. On the left edge, I think you would have to include big, strong Nick Kotrick. Was Nick Kotrick there last year? Uh, he was, and then he got injured, I believe. And then he got injured. Yeah, well, I think Nick Kotrick has been outstanding for the Raiders. He's a big, strong player. So I I'm going to put them on the wing. As for the centres, you could really take a gamble and keep Tommy Turbo. I just don't know if he's played enough games this year to to risk that type of risk for the big stage, even though there's a lot of um, ability for him to play in those big games. I would probably be very scared if you guys named Gatoni Staggs. Whether he starts or off the bench, Katoni Staggs' the starting centre would be big. Um, and then I'm not too sure about the other centre. I'm, I'm not too sure. There's a few choices that could be thrown in there. And I'm going to throw a weird one in there. And I'm going to throw Brett Morris in there. I'm going to throw Brett Morris in contention. I think Brett Morris has had an outstanding season. He can play at centre. He can play on the wing. And uh, he's getting close to the end of his career, in my opinion. So it could be a big boost for him to, to represent New South Wales. Definitely could. So you have left out two big names from last year, which I think are interesting. And in, um, Jack Whiten as the centre and Josh Adokar. I have. Oh, Adokar. Wow. I have left Adokar out. See, I, I do agree with Ferguson. Um. I think he's played a good year, but just the fact that he's only recently scored his first try, and in those games he needs people in form scoring a lot of tries, it would be the only reason why I'd see him missing out. Um, and Norfoluma would be a very good shout for that position. Um, other other names to throw in the mix as well would be Zach Lomax and um, Pappenhausen, as well as potential uh, centers or winger. Mm. Your halves? Who would you have in the the halves? You just said his name, mate. I love Luke Keary. Fantastic player. But I'm putting Jack Whiten in there. His ability to run the ball and speed. He's played different positions for New South Wales. I think he's gone from off the bench to playing into that centre role. So I'm putting Jack Whiten in the six if, I, if I'm off of you. Yeah. As for the seven... I guess you can't go past Nathan Cleary if he's fully fit. Good year. Yeah, Nathan Cleary. Yeah, I think you'd ha probably have to stick with Cleary. Um, I, For what I've seen, I, I like what I see. Um, it, Cleary, I think, just misses out um, if you do pick Whiten at six. Uh, but I, I personally just wouldn't pick Walker again because of he has a good attacking game. The thing that lets him down is his defense. And uh, it, again, it showed in game one for us. So if, if Adam Reynolds continues the form he's been in, will he be in contention for the seven? He's def I think he is already in contention. Uh, I think he's a name that gets looked over a okay. lot. Um, but in the little list on the NRL site um, that's up ahead of me here, I can't see his name, which I think is interesting. Um, I would put him above Walker, in my opinion. But... Um, yeah, is what it is. I would like to know just quickly what your um your forward pack would consist of. Would it stay um, pretty similar to last year? I think it would stay pretty similar. So you've got you've got David Clemmer, you've got Payne Haas, you've got Lloyd Cordner. Did you have Tarek Sims last year or was that 2018? Because maybe uh, that could be a change, mate. He was a... I think he's named at 19th man. He was playing man. last year, wasn't he? No, I think he was named at 19th man. 19th man. Yeah. Okay, right. Because I know he was... Yeah, I would I would take Tarek out. Um, See, it's, it's really hard because you've got people like Clemmer and Saifidi. So, obviously, your Knights forwards um, playing pretty well. 
You got Haas. I'm not too sure about Daniel Saifidi, though. I think there could be other names thrown in contention there. He's had a good season. Don't get me wrong, but I think there's players who have played a little bit better. And the Knights being at the bottom of the ladder rather than up the top could really change Freddie's mind in regards to who he, who he picked. You could even argue Eels Ford's in there, but I, I don't think it will happen. But people who are throwing offloads like Junior Paulo and Campbell Gillard were thrown in the mix with big contention. But I don't know. I, I don't know about that that front row pack besides your Cordner, your Haas, and your... Um, who was the other name? Clemmer. Yeah. Well, Dave Clemmer. Um, I think Dan yeah, Salafi, especially with his injuries this year, he might get looked over. But you've got huge names still. Like, you've got Jake Trevojevic, Cam Murray, Del Finucane, Frizzell, Wade Crayon. Like, there's big names there that some people have to Do miss out. Do you think Finucane stays in that team? I think he does. Do you think starting or bench? I think off the bench. I think off the bench as well. I think off the bench. Um, I think that you'd probably start with Cam Murray just as a little bit more of a ball playing lock and then bring on someone like Fanukin just to hit it up the middle um, and then even push Murray into maybe the second row or somewhere else. But um, I think the big question as well this year, depending on finals, is who would your hooker be? Would you stick with Cook or would you potentially switch up with Coruscant? No, I'd stick with Cook. I'd stick loyal with Cook there. You've stuck with Nathan Cleary. You've stuck with James Tedesco, those type of players who have arguably gone out of form in their moments. And that's exactly what Damien Cook's done this year. But you've stuck with him. So oh, I'm going Damien Cook as, as hooker for you guys for sure. I think we definitely do stick with Cook. Um, and another player that can be thrown in, I, I just don't know if he will get a spot is played well is Cam McInnes because he's now got that lock ability as well um, and he can play hooker if needed. I don't know if we use him as our bench utility, um, mm -hmm. but he is definitely another name that could be thrown in there if a injury does happen or anything else that could go wrong to potentially you, those lock players. Do you think Clint Gutherson could be a... Uh off the bench choice or do you think he'd be an 18th man scenario again in the form he's had yeah i think it would again depend on the finals this is what is interesting about the finals before origin uh, i think that will definitely play a big role mm. um however i think um he would definitely be in the team um maybe as an 18th man if something happens before okay. kickoff going in um i just yeah. He could he could honestly be that wing position uh, replacing Ferguson, just because I don't see anyone. If it, again no injuries happen, overthrowing Teddy for that full back role, so he could be that winger uh, that pairs up with I don't know Carl Kotrick. But that yeah. is entertains um, finals predictions and his teams. Thank you very much for coming onto the show, um, first podcast. So. If you guys haven't, which I'm assuming uh, all of you have, make sure you go over to his channel and check him out. Give him a subscription. Check out his videos. Anything coming up for you that you have to um, point out? And obviously, buy the merch. I'll have to do a finals predictions coming up soon. Um, I'll be doing a game day vlog. I just got an email yesterday to say I can attend the Brisbane Broncos versus Eels match, but just mm. the usual tipping video and stuff. But... Uh, Hopefully I can do a video soon where I redeem all my elite cards. I sent them off um, on Thursday. So some big cards there and looking forward to getting that one out. That'll be a big one. Awesome. So yeah, guys, go over. There'll be a link in the description to Entertain's channel. Go check them out and I will catch you later. Too easy. Thank you.